Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral researcher based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I want to talk about the three new sensors on the Fitbit Sense, which is due to be released in a few days. I will discuss how they work from a scientific perspective, what they can do, and I'll also discuss some of the limitations of these sensors. Now, the Fitbit Sense can do a lot, but many of those features were already present in previous generations of Fitbits, like the Fitbit Charge 4. However, its major selling points revolve around its three new sensors. First of all, the ECG sensor, which can detect atrial fibrillation. Second, there's a temperature sensor, which I could use to detect fever, like some people might experience if they're infected with COVID-19. Finally, the electrodermal activity or EDA sensor, which Fitbit hopes can measure the body's response to stress by measuring small changes in the sweat level of your skin. I'll discuss the features of each of these sensors in turn, discussing how and if possible how well they work, and I'll give some scientific background. As always, I don't want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description and also on the timeline below. The EDA or electrodermal activity sensor basically tracks electrical changes in response to the sweat levels of your skin. Now to get a reading with the Fitbit Sense you put your palm on top of the watch and you wait a few seconds. After that Fitbit will also ask you to rate your mood because it can use that as a baseline. EDA is typically measured on the palms of the hands which is also the way that the Fitbit Sense does it though it is also commonly measured on the fingertips. These sites are chosen because of the high density of eccrine sweat glands, meaning an increased ability to detect changes in skin conductance. As you can see on the front of the Fitbit, there are two electrodes that are clearly separated. And as you place your hand on it, you basically have configuration one as depicted here. So this uses the same electrode as the ECG measurement uses. EDA data is usually collected by applying a low, undetectable constant voltage to the skin and then measuring changes in skin conductance. Research has shown that there's a strong association of this signal with emotional arousal. It is important to mention that any emotional response, both positive and negative, can result in an increase in arousal and therefore also increase your skin conductance. The EDA signal is therefore not representative of the type of emotion, but just the intensity of it. External factors like temperature and humidity can also affect the EDA signal, giving us inconclusive results. So in the end, I think we will all have to try out the EDA sensor of the Fitbit Sense and see if it makes any sense for us. The Fitbit Sense tracks your temperature each night to see how this varies from your personal baseline. Now it's important to know that these are not absolute temperatures, but relative temperatures to your normal baseline. So you can see if you have a higher temperature than normal. This is similar to the way that the Aura Ring does it. I've been wearing the Aura Ring for a while, and here you can see the graph from the Aura Ring, showing the deviations over time. One of the main purposes of this new ability of the Fitbit is to tell you when you have a raised temperature or a fever. Now this is the graph from the Aura Ring when I had a fever, and the sense will work similarly. Where you can clearly see here that the trend is going up for a few days. I think this is actually quite valuable information and a valuable feature, since most people do not want to measure their temperature every day to know what their baseline temperature is, but the sense does it automatically for you without any hassle. In a previous video I did, I showed that there was a quite good association between the temperature measurements taken on the skin at night and your morning temperature measurements immediately after waking up. In addition, women might also be able to use the temperature sensor for menstrual cycle tracking. The company behind the Aura Ring also did a study where they showed that the deviation of the nightly skin temperature corresponded with that of the oral body temperature both in pre-ovulation and post-ovulation phases. Though, from what I understand from Fitbit, in the beginning the focus of the temperature sensor of the Sense might be more on giving you a personalized stress score by combining the temperature data with the other data that the Fitbit Sense collects. What I find quite funny and also interesting is how much emphasis Fitbit puts on the fact that they will only display your temperature deviations in the app and not on the watch itself. They mention this on their website several times and even in their intro video they have a disclaimer saying that showing the temperature on the watch is just for dramatization purposes. The first sensor added to the Sense is an ECG sensor. Now Fitbit just got FDA clearance, making it the third smartwatch company to get approval for the ECG sensor. The other two companies being Apple and Samsung. 
Even though Fitbit also got CE approval in Europe for their ECG sensor, you'll probably have to wait a few weeks until after the release of the Sense in order to use that feature. Now what is ECG? ECG stands for electrocardiogram and this can detect signs of arterial fibrillation or AFib. AFib is basically an irregular and often accelerated heart rate. AFib by itself is not life-threatening and many of us will not even be aware that we have it, but it can lead to things like stroke and heart failure. That's why it might be good and convenient to use a wearable device like a Fitbit Sense to check for signs of arterial fibrillation at home. To the best of my knowledge, an ECG measurement on the Fitbit Sense is performed using one electrode which is located at the bottom of the watch, touching one arm, and to complete the circuit you touch the corners of the metal parts on top of the Sense, which act as the other electrode. This is technically what is called a lead 1 ECG, where lead 1 is the voltage between the positive left arm electrode and the negative right arm electrode. I looked at the FDA approval and the clinical study that Fitbit did, and in this study they showed that the Fitbit Sense was substantially equivalent, which means that the Sense is as safe and as effective as another legally US marketed device. This was based on a clinical trial with 472 participants. Now one group in that study had arterial fibrillation, whereas the other group had a normal sinus rhythm. It's a bit of an oversimplification, but the general conclusion of the study was that the Fitbit was about 90% correct in predicting if somebody had AFib or not, at least compared to how physicians judged it using a standard ECG as used in the clinic. Specifically, it had 90% sensitivity and 92% specificity. In a recent press statement, Fitbit mentions even better numbers, though I wasn't yet able to find a study that actually goes along with these numbers. What they mentioned there is that the study showed that the algorithm exceeded target performance, demonstrating the ability to detect 98.7% of AFib cases, and it was 100% accurate in identifying study participants with normal sinus rhythm. So what are the main limitations of the ECG sensor of the Sense? Well, all the studies I just mentioned were performed by Fitbit, so they might be biased in providing positive results. Second, an ECG sensor like this, also in other devices, cannot detect heart attacks. So these are the three new sensors of the Fitbit Sense that were added compared to its predecessors. Now I think these are really cool and I'm especially curious about the new EDA sensor. Though I would have loved it if this was somehow a continuous measurement, where the watch would track you throughout the day and continuously measure your stress levels and at some point could reliably say, hey, you seem especially stressed right now, is everything okay? In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. For now, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.